Our final gospel reading concludes Luke's, the story of, of Jesus' birth. Excuse me. It's a familiar story. It's worth remembering that the word Christ originally is simply the Greek form of the Hebrew word Messiah, but it later takes on the sense of a title, a name for Jesus. And so many of us are familiar with older translations that speak of Christ the Lord in this story. Um, newer translations go back to Messiah to get the sense it was not a name, it was uh, a description. But Messiah itself means anointed, God's anointed one, which was what was typically done with kings. They were anointed when they took the throne. So let us listen now for the continuation of Luke's Christmas story as we listen for what the Spirit might speak to us through these words. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph, and the child lying in the manger. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In those days, a decree went out from the Emperor Augustus. His real name was Octavius. He was apparently a remarkable fellow. Under Octavius, the Roman Empire had achieved an unprecedented level of prosperity and peace. The empire was secure on far-flung borders, and Octavius was apparently a wise and able and benevolent ruler. Under him, what would become known as the Pax Romana, the peace of Rome, came into its fullest flourish. It was a time of remarkable achievement, of art and architecture. It was a time when travel was incredibly possible and safe in a way that had never happened before. And for that matter, when the Pax Romana collapsed some years later, would never occur again for more than a thousand years. It was because of the incredible achievements of Octavius that the Roman Senate had bestowed upon him the title Augustus, the August One, the esteemed, venerated One. Only later did his name get attached to the calendar.
this Octavius, this Augustus, was emperor, Caesar, anointed one, Lord, when Moses, I mean Moses, when Joseph and Mary travel to Bethlehem and Jesus is born. It's a birth that apparently attracts little notice aside from some animals, maybe a few cousins, fellow travelers. No one seems to know about this birth except for a few shepherds. Shepherd has a long storied history in Israel as a metaphor. Kings were thought of as shepherds of the people. God was the shepherd, the, the great shepherd over all Israel. But that's just metaphor. No one much wanted to be a real shepherd. Shepherd was not a career anyone aspired to. It was at the real bottom rungs of the social pecking order. You would not be inviting shepherds to your Christmas party, I can't imagine. They wouldn't have anything to wear. They generally smelled bad. And they worked at night. Yet, it is to them that comes the announcement. See, I bring you good news good news of one who is born, a savior, a messiah, an anointed one, the Lord. This story is so familiar, I, I sometimes think we forget how strange it is, how odd it is. A Lord, a savior, an anointed one, but we have Augustus. What do we need with a Lord and a Savior? Look at how well things are going. There is peace and prosperity like no one has ever seen. What do we need with a, another anointed one, another Lord? And what kind of king, what kind of lord and anointed one is visited only by shepherds? What do we need with a savior, a messiah, an anointed one? Lord? That's a good question to ask now as much as in Jesus' day. Augustus is long gone, but we have lots of things we can count on for peace or prosperity. What do we need with an anointed one, a savior, a Lord, especially one who clearly has an affinity for people at the wrong end of the social spectrum. You know, it, we in the church have often seen much more enamored with Augustus types than with Jesus types. And our world seems to prefer Augustus types to Jesus types. So as we celebrate the birth of a Savior, an anointed one, the Lord, perhaps we would do well to ask ourselves the question, what do we need 
with such a one. Of course, it's sort of funny that all these years later, most of us, even though biblical literacy is sort of non-existent in our world, still most of us know the story of Jesus a lot better than we know the story of Augustus. Perhaps there's some wisdom there. A savior, an anointed one, the Lord is born. Christ is born. Let us worship. Let us serve. Let us follow our Lord. All praise and glory to the God who comes to earth as a regular little boy who hangs out at the bottom of society and calls us to become like him. Thanks be to God.